Well, I was out running in the chill winter air, and I felt so exhilarated that I thought I would do one of my helpful videos, counseling people who need my sage guidance. This is one of the pesky dames. Got the idea from a video that Girl Writes What liked. So let's see what she has to say. Hey dames. Uh, so I wanted to make a video about weight because that's been on my mind recently. It's mostly just a rant, so sorry it's not really a manifesto or anything of consequence. It's just kind of how I'm feeling at the moment to make myself feel better. Well then I won't be too harsh. But I will go on a little digression here. Back when Ron Paul was still like a thing that people talked about, I used to piss off Ron Paul supporters by pointing out a relatively obvious truth of reality. they talk about Ron Paul's manifesto and I would tell them, very rarely is a manifesto a sign of good mental health. Mentally healthy people don't often write manifestos. That's just, that's just, that's just a fact, Jack. A few years ago, when I was at university, uh, I used to be uh, a lot bigger than I am now, and I was like a fat posy activist, and I was on quite a lot of like body posy forums. I had to watch this like three times because I kept thinking she was saying I was a fat pervy activist. I really wanted to be sort of completely happy in who I was, and so I took a lot of pleasure in food and just generally kind of being myself and not worrying about things and you know when I felt really really bad about how I looked I would just kind of dye my hair a different color. You know I've never dyed my hair once. But then again I always feel pretty good about myself so yeah but apparently that hair dyeing thing is not all that uncommon. Seedling she took it to a whole other level. I don't understand why a person would think changing their hair color would make them feel better but since I've never done it hell maybe it does. And try not to worry about it too much. But then I got depression, uh, and then I just kind of stopped eating because I felt numb towards basically everything, but especially food. And then I very, very rapidly, a couple of years ago, lost a lot of weight. That was not a good thing. <laughs> All of a sudden, when I was eating a pack of donuts to myself, it wasn't an act of reclamation of my body, it was more just like people would see that as a skinny girl showing off the fact that she could eat stuff without getting fat. Oh my god, that is better than sex with you. Well, I just ran six miles, get off my nutsack. Seriously, you're crushing it. Waka waka. And that wasn't my intention at all, like I would just be eating a donut and then other people would be like, oh, you're such a bitch. Why do you eat so much? Like, how do you stay that skinny? All of this bullshit. And I kind of just wanted to turn around and say, like, this is the only thing I've eaten all day. That's not a good thing at all. I've had plenty of women telling me that, like, they wish that they could be in an abusive relationship and kind of get depression and not eat. Yeah, those sound like some stellar friends he got there. Kind of explains a lot. And that, you know, that could happen to them and then they would lose loads of weight and I'm just kind of like, no, it's not healthy. But seriously, the direction the conversation goes, you're like, oh, I'm in an abusive relationship and they're like, oh, let's focus on my weight loss. Actually, uh, is it misogynistic to say that women are bitches? Because, I mean, that's why... I've it's not good. I, I didn't stop eating with the intention of getting skinny. I, I stopped eating as a byproduct of being really depressed. And it was horrid. And being chubby for me was like way healthier. Um, I was way happier. The thing is though, I've come to like this weird crossroads where like I moved and everything, all of the body posy went out the window and so this far through the video, I feel it's interesting to note that this is about feminism and weight anxiety, but exercise hasn't been mentioned even passingly, even once. Just gonna make note of that. Suddenly I've started worrying about how I look again. And so I'm being really, really overly critical of myself. And I've been labelling myself as disgusting and fat and grotesque and all of this bullshit which I just don't fucking need. No one needs it, really. And like, I mean, that's kind of super worried me that I've started feeling this way because I'm a hardened body posy feminist. <laughs> the thing is, because I feel that way, 
and because I've worked really really hard to not care about how I look and focus on like other attributes and other than my fucking jean size. Still no mention of exercise, but I feel like I should point out at this point, and I don't want to sound mean, but I really am being honest here, when I look at you young lady, I think this is what fat people are talking about when they're saying that being thin doesn't necessarily mean you're healthier. Because you are not particularly fat, but looking at you, you are just like an explosion of diseases relating to metabolic syndrome. I can tell by the way your neck is thin but your face is fat, the way your chin appears recessed by growing neck waddle, even though you're not really quite fat enough to have the double chin yet and you seem like you're under 30, and the, the double chin in somebody under 30 is always a bad sign. What I'm saying is that regardless of what you weigh, you are in god-awful physical condition. I have met people who weigh 100 pounds more than you who will outlive you, because I can... I know that you haven't mentioned exercise. I don't think you do exercise. And how you feel about your appearance, that doesn't change the laws of biology. If you don't ever exert yourself physically, your body will decay. Now, some people's faster than others, but yours, I can absolutely assure you that you have elevated triglycerides, an unfavorable HDL to LDL ratio, and a fair degree of insulin resistance. I can diagnose this by looking at you. Go to any doctor, and they will tell you, bitch, get on the treadmill. It doesn't matter how you look. If you want to live, exercise. Recently that internalized misogyny has been kind of like seeping through and... Internalized misogyny. You know, you, you feminists crack me up. It'd be a lot funnier if you weren't serious, but it's still pretty funny. Then when I feel bad about my weight and I feel ashamed about what I've eaten, I then start to guilt myself saying like, but you should know better than that. Like, you're a feminist, come on, what are you doing? I guilt myself even more, and then I shame myself over all of this shit, and like, oh god, I hate myself, and like, I'm just gonna... I don't know if this is like hand in hand with like my depression kind of creeping up on me again. By the way, depression is one of those things that goes hand in hand with the explosive metabolic syndrome that you so clearly have. As I've said it before in previous videos, if you don't ever exercise, you have a, a woefully deconditioned stress response mechanism. This almost inevitably brings around depression or some other sort of mental malaise. Get on the treadmill. So I'm kind of giving in to my insecurities, or like the fact that I've moved, so my support network has completely changed. Um, also, I now work on Oxford Street, which is like the epicenter. Well, okay, one, I've deduced from things that you've said that your support system was a bunch of bitches, and you're probably better off without them too. And this is just my personal opinion, but of course it's correct. So social support groups cannot ever effectively change your behaviors. At best, they're kind of a crutch. You have to change something deep inside here. It takes iron. Support groups, it's just a bunch of fucking marshmallows and ponies and rainbows and shit. That, it's useless. Useless triacle. A bullshit capitalism profiting from insecurity. So like everything I see it's just like fucking photoshopped to like the nth degree. And like I think previously where I used to have mostly feminist conversations about body posi stuff, now because I work as a bra fitter, like I just kind of feel as though like the norm of what I hear and what I talk about, I'd say like 40% of it easily is sort of people talking about their diets or weight loss or shaming themselves. And still no talk of exercise, I feel like I've confidently diagnosed the root of your problem. Get on the treadmill! The other day I sat down in front of a girl at lunchtime and she was just like, don't tell anyone. And I was like, what the, what? Are you okay? And she was like, I ate a yogurt and cake for lunch. And so naturally, you politely replied, You narcissistic bitch, I don't give a shit what you eat. Fuck, I barely care what I eat. I can't believe that you wasted my time telling me that shit like I actually gave a damn. Get the fuck up out my face. That is what you said, right? It's like, well, uh, why do you not need to tell anyone that? Why are we so fucking pent up in these 
masochistic eating rituals. We should be able to eat what we want without making ourselves feel like shit. But you can't eschew all physical activity and likewise expect to not feel like shit. The very nature of your biology will not permit a person to be 100% lazy physically and then also happy. It's just the natural consequence of a deconditioned body that you will feel like shit. Sorry, I didn't invent nature. It ain't the patriarchy. Go bitch at yourselves while you're on the treadmill. One of my friends said I work on the front line of body insecurity and I, I guess that's a supposedly true. Um, I see a lot of women with a lot of insecurities kind of taking it all out on me in 20 minute sessions. Um, like people judging me and making comments about my body is kind of an occupational hazard. We're just constantly talking about bodies and imperfections and you know every single woman like literally there, there will be days where every single woman who I talk to will be like oh but like I get back fat in this bra it's like, dude, like, that's because you're human. I have never gotten back fat in my bra. What's up now? And you have tissue and skin and muscles and hair. And, like, that's just, that's just like a human body. If you didn't get, like, a slight little bulge on your bra, you'd be a robot. Everyone gets that. I don't think I've ever seen anyone not get that. I don't know, what, what am I trying to say with all of this? I suppose that women need to stop tearing each other down in like this really self-deprecating way. Like stop saying like, oh my god, shut up, like my thighs are way bigger than yours. Cause... Well, I'm glad that you mentioned that it is women doing all of this shaming. And for your perspicacity, I shall reward you with the Snape Pliskinist manner of meditation. Now I got this thing at Toys R Us, and no, it's not a bong. It's actually a three-lead electroencephalogram. Yeah, a lot of meditation techniques are like, oh, feel your inner self, uh, align your chakras, or some stupid bullshit like that. But me, I like something a little more measurable. Now, this will measure the frequency of your brain waves. Now, worry is basically some feedback in your brain gone awry. And is characterized it's a Star Wars toy and is characterized by beta waves now because my brain is active it has a high frequency right at this particular moment so practice lowering your brain wave frequency it's been a while since I've done this alpha waves you have released your burden. Now let me think about the global economy and the, how it's going to collapse and then the finite resources that we have available. Humanity's probably not going to make it. Oh my god, we're going to die! Oh. Oh. Quit talking, Yoda. You're pissing me off. Now the trick is, you get down to alpha waves and find a way to sustain that level of activity. Unfortunately, while doing a video, I, I'm having to concentrate on a number of things. Well, you get the idea. Put these leads right here. They're supposed to go back here on the occipital lobe, but you'll want to put them here near your temporal lobe if you're going to be reducing your worry. Of course, uh, you, know, you know, well, that's just, just try that out. It'll probably take you a little while to master that. And, like, I haven't done it for a while, and I, I'm not that good at it anymore. But once you learn how to lower the frequency of your brain waves, you can at will negate that worry and keep your brain from digging in and pissing away vital resources. My brain's actually pretty efficient, but I gotta assume that 
your brain, much like the rest of your body, is not. So, I hope that I have been helpful in this little session. Get on the treadmill. Buy yourself one of these Star Wars mind control toys. This thing was only a hundred bucks when I bought it, and that was years ago. They're probably down to like 60 now. I don't know how many liras or pounds or francs or whatever that is. But, you have you a nice day.